Hey folks, it's me, China Guitar Skeptic, back with another video. As I promised, I'm not going anywhere, and I'm still intending to make videos about China and Chinese guitars. I'm just not buying anymore. And I've continued to get comments on the channel about me saying that all guitars from China are rubbish. And I just want to clear up again, for the record, that that's not what I'm saying. There are Jacksons and Washburns and many other makes of guitar that make their cheaper range in China and make pretty good instruments there. So I will continue to do some of the reviews. I might even get hold of some of those Chinese branded guitars and let you see what the quality's like and do some reviews of them. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. However, today, a video entitled, How Could a True Luthier Get It This Wrong? It's a shock horror story from one of my subscribers about a D45 that he bought in China. Yeah, so the long and short of what happened here is my friend, who we will call James, but that's not his real name. He's from Vegas in the States, and he was going over to Singapore to see his girlfriend. What a long commute that is. And he wanted to have a guitar to play while he was over there, and so bought a fake D45 from a store on AliExpress that was suggesting that they would be happy to make a D45 with a personalized custom logo because my friend on YouTube did not want to infringe trademarks and he wanted to get his own logo put on the headstock. So he placed an order and this is the catalog of errors that follows. What you're about to hear is an email that he sent me and it details exactly what had gone wrong. To set the story up, I ordered the guitar on the 26th of April for the express purpose of having a guitar at my girlfriend's place in Singapore, but wouldn't be traveling there till the first week of July and didn't want to make her responsible for receiving it, paying potential import taxes and unboxing to make sure it was okay. Number one, ordered the guitar 26th of April, asked for a 60 day delivery date. There was some discussion over the headstock logo and build without any electronics. I didn't want any unnecessary rattling. And they said they didn't have any without electronics in the warehouse. So they agreed to deliver 7th of July with the caveat that it be properly set up and photos sent prior to shipping. Two, at 30 days with no intention to ship, the manufacturer entered a fake shipping number to Singapore. I was in absolute panic. I asked why they didn't send photos of the finished guitar. She said we didn't ship the guitar. So I did an online chat with her on AliExpress about the shipping date being entered. They acted like it was no big deal, and I still had 30 days buyer protection. At 60 days, I get a notice that the buyer protection has ended and the manufacturer paid. Again, the guitar still has not shipped. I contact AliExpress via online chat and have another lengthy discussion with, about my order, and they tell me, you still have 15 days after the 30 days. I demand that my entire order be reset to the true shipping date, which happened to be the day I was contacting them. They insist the 15 days is enough. I asked to have the issue escalated to a manager and was told I'd receive a contact email in two days. No email ever came. So then I get a private message from the manufacturer that the guitar has shipped. I have it redirected to Las Vegas. And here is the new shipping number, but no photo was sent. So they sent me this fake photo of the guitar sitting on a cardboard box. I knew at this point my cause was lost, my ship was taking on water and the crew was booking other options home. So five, I actually received the guitar. Full Martin headstock. Ugh. Then I start to play the guitar. I think it was made for an India sitar band. So I begin the process of seeing what I needed to do to make this thing right. Fortunately, my skills are above average for an amateur luthier. And I've built my own gorgeous strap Fender parts caster and have replaced nuts and saddles and done fret jobs to varying degrees on all of my acoustics. 68 Gibson LG Zero, two Taylor GS Minis, Martinez classical guitar, and Laravie OM40R, none of which are fakes. First off, the neck and the body separately support the fretboard, so there, there is the much-hated plateau. So I tried to get the tension as level as possible and check out what actual fretboard level is, and bam, the notch straight edge doesn't fit. What? So I measure the scale length to see if I'm making a mistake, and it's dead on 25 and a half inches. However, the damn thing was fretted on a 25 and a quarter inch scale, 
So I immediately messaged the manufacturer of this engineering issue. No response whatsoever to this day. Guess what? Now the 15 days is gone. I no longer have buyer protection at all now, so my only recourse is to list as much as I can on the review of the guitar and hope it actually makes it onto the manufacturer's product description. Here's a link to the feedback I provided on AliExpress, and it was published. It was limited to 1,000 words, but I could write a book. I got a little snarky, but I was truly angry after being flat out ignored by both the manufacturer and AliExpress. However, you cannot find this guitar in their store listings, they just dropped it from public view by not linking to it on their website. Hmm. What have I done? Bought a new bone nut and compensated saddle and cut them imperfect. The original bone must have been the softest they could find. I think it actually may be manufactured bone. Seriously. Anyway, I bought a, a beautiful bridge and p bridge pins and began the fret leveling process. I really had to cut down the 13th to get the whole thing to lay flat. It's pretty close, but as it acclimatizes to the Vegas weather, it's still doing wonky things to the cheap fretboard. The tuners are locking tuners. I requested these and got them at no cost. The internal pin still had burrs on them, so as you tighten them up, they literally cut the strings. The tuners are okay, but one had a smashed plastic bushing on the peg and was extremely loose. The body is beautiful and the finish is beautiful, but I can't really tell if the real if it's real abalone or just a sticker that was finished over or was truly cut in properly. Time will tell. Here is a picture of the finished guitar with new nut, saddles and pins. 9. Playing it. If you compare it to my OM40R from Larivee, you would swear the damn thing just loses notes. You play chords and you would swear notes were missing. Some chords are so faint in the high end it makes me crazy. I'm so glad I never had this ship to Singapore. I would have had to run to the local guitar shop and bought a cheap Ibanez. And at this point, that's a great deal for a good guitar. So... There you have it, another issue in China, a manufacturing of Chinese guitars. What a real concern for anybody seriously considering buying anything fake from China. It just isn't worth it. This guitar, which he has measured, has a bridge which is fixed at a 25 and a half inch scale length, and then all of the fret work is done at 25 and a quarter inch which means that this guitar is never going to intonate all the way up the neck properly. It's never going to play in tune and may actually be something that's synonymous with many of the fake guitars because a lot of the guitars that I've had from China, until I've put a compensated nut on them, particularly the Chibsons, have never played in tune. Greeny Moore was notorious for being out of tune either at the top of the neck or more regularly at the top of the neck or also down at the, at the nut end. Uh, open string if I tuned for at the top. So I'm wondering if this is a, a common problem with manufacturing of the fake guitars in China. It may be that they come out of a single same factory that are having an issue with scale length. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I will be back with another video really soon. And in fact, this one is a bit of a shock horror story from another subscriber of mine who's also had one of his imported um, guitars confiscated by UK Border Force and he disputed the confiscation and wrote to them to dispute it and you'll be amazed at the response that he got but I'll be back with that video real soon. In the meantime folks take good care.